right? So as you had seen in the last few classes, uh, the function was a single function earlier, right? But here, this is a function, you know, where it has a discontinuity, you know, here this function is discontinuous at pi. So even when the function has certain discontinuity, if it has finite number of discontinuities, even then we can find out the Fourier series in a very regular way, right? Let's see that by this example, you are given the function as one for the values zero to pi, and it is zero for the values of x between pi and two pi. On the whole, anyway, you can understand the function uh, is defined in the interval zero to two pi, right? So it is also defined in an interval of length two pi, fine. Then, see, I'm just writing the Fourier series, the regular formula what we use. Uh, so we can write the Fourier series as f of x is equals to a naught by two plus summation a n cos n x plus b n sin n x. So the regular formula what we use and summation takes values from n is equals to one to infinity, correct? And in this, uh, you know, what are these three Fourier coefficients? If you take a naught, it is actually one by pi into integration from zero to two pi f of x dx. So this is the actual formula what we use for calculating a naught. But here, for particularly for this case, you know, the function has a discontinuity at pi. So anyways, the idea is to evaluate this integral here. So when you are evaluating this integral where the function has a discontinuity, where the function has a break, what we do normally, we'll just try to split that integral into two different parts. I mean, we'll just write this integral as a sum of two different integrals, one by pi into See, I'm just writing it like this. You see, I'm writing it as once from zero to pi and then from pi to two pi. So zero to pi fx dx plus integration from pi to two pi fx dx. We'll split the actual integral into two parts like this. Right? Why you're writing it like this? Because the function has a discontinuity, it has a break at this value pi. Okay. Now let me just substitute everything into this. So it is one by pi into, uh, see how much it is integration from zero to pi. Uh, within this interval, zero to pi, the function value what you are given is simply one, isn't it? So I'm substituting f of x is equals to one here. So it becomes simply one into dx plus for the remaining half, you know, pi to two pi. Within this interval, you know, you are given the function value f of x as simply zero into dx. Fine. Then see if you simplify this. I'm writing here, you see it is equals to one by pi into, uh, when you integrate one, see we are integrating it with respect to x. When you integrate one, we'll simply get it as only x and the limits are from zero to pi. Plus when we integrate zero, you know, the integral value is also zero, right? So I'm not taking any limits there. So when you substitute everything into this, you see, we'll get it like this, one by pi into, when you substitute the upper limit, it is pi, minus when you take uh, lower limit zero, you know, it is simply zero. So what remains here, you see pi by pi. So that will write a naught is equals to simply one. It is one because you know, you can even cancel that pi, right? So we got a naught. Now, if you calculate a n, see how much it is. A n is equals to the same idea, you know, one by pi into integration from zero to two pi fx dx. I'm sorry, fx into cos and x dx, right? That's the formula as we know. So now again, as we did here, I'm splitting this into two different integrals. So therefore we can write a n is equals to one by pi into, uh, see, I'm just writing it into two different integrals, zero to pi. Uh, within this interval, what is f of x? I'm writing it directly. It is one into cos and x plus the other half pi to two pi. It is, you know, in this interval, the function value is zero. So I'm writing f of x is equals to zero into cos and x. So then it is equals to one by pi into, uh, what comes out you see here, when you multiply one and cos and x, it is simply cos and x only. So when you integrate cos and x, right, the simple thing is to integrate only cos and x here. When we integrate cos and x, we'll get it as sin nx by n with the limits from zero to pi. Fine. Then plus, uh, what happens here? You see zero into cos and x, it is simply zero only. 
when you integrate that zero it is simply zero that's it so i'm not writing any limits uh, then what happens here you see 1 by pi into uh, what happens let me write here in the next line this place is not sufficient uh, it is equals to 1 by pi into uh, if you substitute the limits so first of all we need to take it as x is equals to pi uh, let me write this n out of uh, this bracket so that we can write the remaining things quite easily it, it becomes actually when n goes out it becomes n pi then when you substitute the upper limit x is equals to pi it becomes sin n pi minus when you substitute the lower limit x is equals to 0 it becomes a sin 0 and the remaining terms are anyway zeros so this is equals to 1 by n pi into uh, do you remember the value of sin n pi yes sin n pi is absolutely 0 minus sin 0 is also 0 therefore you see we'll get a n is equals to 0 what does it mean this function has it can be represented as a fourier series without having any cosine terms in it right probably if if you get certain value for bn only with those sine functions we can write its fourier series expansion right the coefficients of all cosine functions in the fourier series of this function are zeros that's one observation anyway so let me calculate bn now see if I consider bn is equals to the regular formula what I'm writing 1 by pi into integration from 0 to 2 pi f of x into sin nx dx. So this is equals to the same way I'm splitting this into two integrals 1 by pi into once it is from 0 to pi. Uh, what is f of x in the interval 0 to pi? You are given it as 1 into sin nx dx plus in the other half you know pi to 2 pi the function value what you are given is 0 into sin nx dx right so then it is equals to 1 by pi into what happens to this you see it is only sin nx when you integrate sin nx you know it is minus cos nx divided by n with the limits from 0 to pi plus when we when you multiply 0 and sin nx the product is anyway 0 so I'm not writing that so it is equals to see what happens here 1 by pi into uh, similarly you see as we did in the previous case here also first of all I'm bringing this minus out of that so it, it becomes minus 1 and in the denominator also I'm bringing n out of this bracket so it becomes n pi uh, then what remains here is only cos nx now in cos nx you are substituting the limits so the upper limit is pi you know when you substitute x is equals to pi it becomes cos n pi minus when you take x is equals to 0 it becomes cos 0 right so then what happens to this you see it is equals to there it is minus 1 by n pi let it be like this uh, what is the value of cos n pi i hope you remember yes you are right it is minus 1 to the power of n minus cos 0 it is 1 right now see we got this as bn but see just uh, for an idea look at these values carefully we have a minus 1 to the power of n here if you take n as even right i mean bn uh, as we know bn are the coefficients of sine functions and n also takes values from 1 to infinity right they're all integers positive integers so when n is equal to 2 or 4 you know any even number for all those even values of n this minus 1 to the power of n becomes plus 1 so that it be, it is plus 1 minus 1 you know this becomes 0 for odd values of n for odd values of n minus 1 to the power of n becomes minus 1 and here this is also minus 1 so it becomes minus 2 and there it is a minus 1 by 2 pi minus 1 by n pi so minus 2 into minus 1 it becomes 2 by n pi you know so for even values of n simply bn is becoming zero but you are getting some other things when n is odd let me just write that more clearly here so therefore bn is equals to uh, it is zero if n is odd odd or even even right uh, when n is even and it becomes see how much it is minus one by n pi is there and you are getting a minus 2 here minus 1 minus 1 so when you multiply these two it is 2 divided by n pi and this is when n is odd right so these are the values what you got here uh, as the Fourier coefficients therefore 
if you write finally the Fourier series, the Fourier series of f of x is f of x is equals to how much it is a naught by two. See how much you got a naught. We got it as only one. So I'm just substituting. You know, a naught is equals to one in this. So a naught by two. So it is one by two plus summation a n into cos n x. See how much we got a n. It is simply zero. So I'm not writing plus b n into sin n x. But look at b n. It has again two values. It is zero when n is even, and it is uh, existing only for odd values of n. That's how you see. I'm not directly writing it as from n is equals to one to infinity. Normally we write like this, correct? But here b n is existing only for odd values of n. That's how I'm just writing it like this. You see, summation n is equals to one, three, five, and so on up to infinity, right? n takes only odd numbers. Then the series is two by n pi. Into sine n x. That's a Fourier series. If you want more clearly, you see you can also write it like this. That is f of x is equals to one by two plus. Uh, if you take different values to n, uh, look at this. You know we have a two by pi here. That two by pi is independent of n, so we can write it outside. Then two by pi times. If you take different values of n, for n is equals to one, it is one by one into sine x. Fine. Then for n is equals to two, it is Uh, you cannot take two, you know. We take n must as n as odd only, so we can take then three. One by three into sine three x plus we can take then five. One by five into sine five x and so on. So this is what you call the Fourier series of that given discontinuous function.